If you're like many voters, this election might be your first time filling out an absentee ballot, myself included. And local clerks say too many of those ballots are not being filled out correctly. NBC26's Eric Crest has a timely reminder on how to make sure that your vote is counted. All across Wisconsin, ballots are flooding in to municipal clerk's offices. But for those who make a mistake filling them out, well, only some of the issues can be discovered before clerks open them up. We cannot start opening them up until 7 a.m. on election day. To make sure your ballot is counted, the elections committee recommends you first find a black ballpoint pen. Not a Sharpie, not a marker, just a black ink ballpoint pen. Michelle Seidel, the village clerk in Wrightstown, says then you'll want to make your choices for candidates in as neat and as careful of a manner as possible. We would just fill in the oval as tight as possible. Now it's time to put your ballot in the ballot envelope that was provided. No inside. postage stamp is needed, but your John Hancock is a and must. The first yellow line, that is the voter signature and the date. Now the village of Wrightstown only has about 3,300 people, but municipalities both large and small all tend to run into one major issue that will invalidate your ballot. Majority of them come in with a witness signature, but there is no address or the address is, incom is incomplete. They'll put their street address, but they won't put the city, state, and zip. That's the line that majority of time is being missed. A witness can be anyone over 18 that is a U.S. citizen, and they are supposed to witness you fill out your ballot and seal it. After that, it's best not to tamper with your ballot at all. If the ballot comes open, if it's very torn where the ballot is exposed and can be removed from the en envelope, that would be a situation where we would want to check a little further with the voter. And when you drop it off at your clerk's ballot box or send it in the mail, clerks across the state are hopeful that you did so in a timely manner. Don't wait until there's a, a worry that they, the mail may not get it back to us in time. It has to be here by 8 p.m. on election night. In the village of Wrightstown, Eric Crest, NBC 26. Great tips to make sure our votes count. Eric, thank you. Right now, the U.S. Postal Service estimates delivering your ballot to your clerk could take up to seven days, and we're currently two weeks away from election day. So there's information on absentee. Meantime, early in-person voting continues in Wisconsin, which technically is part of absentee. NBC 26's Jenna Bree shows us what you can expect if you're planning on voting in person early. It's really not too different. The biggest thing is just having to wait outside, especially with it being so cold out right now. In Green Bay, Ashwaubenon, and other municipalities, voters have to wait outside. Election officials want people to stay socially distanced. Here in Ashwaubenon, there are lines drawn on the ground to show people where to stand. Workers help steer traffic in and out of the building. Village clerk Patrick Moynihan says all voters are strongly encouraged to wear a mask, but it's not actually required. It's recommended. I can't force anyone to wear it. I can't deny someone to, uh, their right to vote by not wearing a mask. You've still got eight days to vote early in person if you want. All of that is taking place at your city, town, or village clerk's office. In Ashwaubenon, I'm Jenna Bree, NBC 26. It was another mainly cloudy and chilly day across northeast Wisconsin. Right now, it's more of the same. 39 degrees in Appleton, in Green Bay with cloudy skies. The temperature is 42. At least the winds have died down just a bit, so we're not looking at a wind chill factor. Temperatures across the state range from the lower 50s in Milwaukee to the lower and mid 30s farther north. Your evening planner calls for plenty of clouds. Temperatures will slowly fall through the upper 30s and lower 40s into the mid and upper 30s with light west to northerly winds. Back to you. It'll be a chilly night. Thanks, Cam. According to Green Bay Police, two people were hospitalized after a shooting on the city's west side this afternoon. Police say they were called to the 1800 block of South Ashland Avenue where they found two people who had injuries related to gunfire. They were both taken to hospitals for treatment. Police do not believe the public is in any danger and are continuing to investigate.
Now to a look at coronavirus here in Wisconsin. The state reporting system was down over the weekend, which could account for the record numbers we're seeing again today. More than 4,200 new confirmed cases today, and there are more than 38,000 active cases in our state. A jump in reported deaths, 48 since yesterday. More than 1,600 people have died from COVID-19 in Wisconsin. And a reminder, as we continue to navigate through this pandemic, you can find ways to keep your family safe and healthy at NBC26.com or on the NBC26 streaming app. De Pere and Green Bay together said the cities are not recommending trick-or-treating for this year. According to a statement from both cities, they recommend people instead enjoy virtual events to see friends and families or make treats at home with family. This, to be clear, does not ban people from trick-or-treating in the cities. If people do decide to trick-or-treat, they are actually setting official hours, which are between 4 and 7 in the evening, Halloween night, October 31st. The first patient has now been admitted to the alternate care facility at State Fair Park. The facility opened one week ago. It's known as the ACF. It was created to treat people infected with COVID-19 who are not severely ill, but still do require medical help. Patients admitted to the facility have been hospitalized for at least 48 hours. Still ahead here, meet a mail worker who has worked on the front lines of the pandemic. See how her job potentially saved a life. But first, a live look outside from our Green Bay Tower cam. Traffic moving along pretty well on Highway 172. Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland's full forecast coming up after the break. Stay with us. And now your weather with Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland. It's turning into a chilly October. The average temperature right now running two to three degrees below normal for the month. And there is no end in sight to this stretch of cold weather. Take a look at the next seven days. Our normal high is in the 50s. Tomorrow and Friday we'll see mid 40s, but after that it's upper 30s to lower 40s for highs. Right now temperatures across northeast Wisconsin range from the upper 40s in Sheboygan to the lower 30s in Anigo, where there was five inches of snow yesterday. We had about four and a half inches of snow in Townsend. Mountain picked up two and a half inches of snow. The highest total within the state of Wisconsin was in Ellsworth, almost nine inches. That's just to the south and west of Eau Claire. Today, here across most of northeast Wisconsin, we had lots of clouds, a little bit of sunshine, and some gusty winds. Those clouds developing ahead of our next weather maker, which is an area of low pressure, now pulling out of the Rockies. It's going to swing off to the north and east. It'll produce heavy snow to our north and west once again across the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northwestern Wisconsin. But for us... It's rain and thunderstorms. There's actually a threat for severe weather across parts of Wisconsin as we head into tomorrow afternoon. You can see on SkyCast we'll have quiet weather tonight. Some on and off showers are possible tomorrow morning. And then we'll have periods of showers and thunderstorms as we head through the day tomorrow. And the rain could be locally heavy. The computer forecast models are forecasting a widespread one to two inches of rain across the NBC 26 viewing area, but some locally higher amounts in excess of three inches are certainly possible if we can get some training thunderstorms or thunderstorms hitting the same spot over and over, and that could result into, into some uh, urban flooding and also some ponding of water on area roads. Not only that, we're going to have strong northeast winds developing as we move into the afternoon and evening, sustained at around 20 to 30 miles per hour, but some higher gusts are certainly likely, and Lake Michigan remains very high, which means once again, we could be looking at some lakeshore flooding, so you need to be alert for rising water and possible shoreline erosion if you live along Green Bay or Lake Michigan as we head into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. With clouds and rain, it's going to be another chilly day. High temperatures will be running about 5 to 10 degrees below normal for uh, this time of year. Most of us will be in the 40s. Over the last couple of days, it looked like there was going to be a small window of opportunity to get up into the 60s tomorrow evening ahead of midnight, but the warm front is now going to stall out just to our south South and east. So from roughly Sheboygan South, temperatures tomorrow evening will be in the 60s to around 70. But for most of us, it's going to be just 
40s. Tonight, cloudy skies with overnight lows in the mid to upper 30s. Tomorrow, some showers early, then on and off showers and thunderstorms for the rest of the day. The rain could be heavy. We're going to see those gusty northeast winds really pick up as we head into the afternoon and evening. My three degree guarantee for tomorrow is 46. If I can hit that high within three degrees, we will donate $100 to We All Rise. And we did that today. I forecast 47. The actual high temperature was 44 degrees. A few lingering showers Friday morning, then mostly cloudy and cool, 46. Some sunshine returns on Saturday, but the high temperature is only going to be 43. A system moving across the state Sunday into Monday may produce some more rain or snow. Highs will be in the upper 30s to lower 40s, and then we can expect upper 30s to lower 40s as we get closer and closer to Halloween. Nina? Looking forward to that sun on Saturday. By then, we're going to need it. Ken, thank you. Next at 6, postal service workers have faced many challenges in the pandemic. Coming up, meet a woman who remains committed to helping her neighborhood. Mail carriers and delivery truck drivers are stretched thin in their work right now. Lindsay Betts shows us how the pandemic is changing those jobs. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. While it isn't the official Postal Service motto, it's something mailwoman Amy Bezerra has kept to for the past 25 years this month. And now we can add COVID to that list of things that postal workers press through. Amy is one of almost a half a million mail carriers for the USPS. And for the last eight of those 25 years, she's had the same route just north of Denver. My max is usually six years. And then I'm like, eh, it's time to move on and learn a different area. And which is really hard because you do get close to your customers. But because of COVID, the part of her job she loves the most. My customers being outside, being able to involve yourself with other people, giving customer service to a wide variety of people has now changed. I don't see near as many people. Um, your customers, if they do come out, which is not, it's very rare anymore. And people are ordering things now more than ever. A lot of people are not going out to stores purchasing. They're staying home, doing it on the computer, which gives us more parcels, which is uh, awesome. It's deemed an essential public service, critical to the nation's infrastructure and critical to so many lives. We deliver life-saving meds to people. And also provides a service that many wouldn't think. You get to know the people, the kids, the pets, who should be around, you know, in the neighborhood, who shouldn't and people schedules. So a few years ago, when one of her customers didn't pick up his mail for a few days, she knew something was wrong. She called for help. He had just been real sick and completely dehydrated, but every time he'd get up, he'd pass out. The ER doctor said he wouldn't have made it 24 hours. I have five more years, and I have really bonded with these people out here that I've pretty much promised them unless the post office takes it away from me, I'm here for five more years <laughs> with them. So so neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night, nor COVID will stop Amy from delivering to her customers. I'm Lindsay Boach. Oh, that's commitment. A historic and disproportionate number of women have left the workforce since the start of this pandemic. Tonight at 10, see why experts fear it will have long-lasting, long-term effects. Still ahead, is the Packers' offense becoming too predictable? A closer look at one of the biggest plays in Sunday's game, next in sports. And now sports with Brandon Kinnock. Some extra film study for the Buccaneers and predictable play design for the Packers may have combined to lead to the biggest play of last Sunday's game. We're talking about the pick six. Buccaneers cornerback Jamel 